defense deal with Papua New Guinea shows just how much Washington needs military cooperation in the Pacific Islands. Welcome to VOA Asia Weekly. I'm Jessica Stone. We'll get to that story in just a moment. But first, making headlines. South Korean nuclear experts toured the shuttered Fukushima nuclear power plant this week. The 21-member team was sent to inspect the process the Japanese utility TEPCO says it is using to clean the wastewater stored after a 2011 tsunami damaged the plant. China ordered its infrastructure companies to stop using chips made by the U.S. company Micron Technology. The directive came hours after the G7 in Hiroshima, Japan, released a statement criticizing China's coercive economic policies. China's Commerce Minister Wang Wentao is set to meet with U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai and Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo this week. The World Health Organization holds its annual assembly this week in Switzerland without Taiwan. China and Pakistan had urged members to reject Taipei's inclusion. The Marshall Islands spoke in favor of Taiwan's inclusion. Beijing welcomed the WHO decision on the self-governing island that China considers its own territory. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi getting a red carpet welcome in Sydney, Australia. Modi met with Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese to announce a new center for Australia-India relations and increased cooperation on defense and commerce. Australia is eager to increase trade with India as a means of diversifying from China, its largest trading partner. A progressive political coalition in Thailand signed an agreement this week to draft a new constitution that would recognize same-sex marriage and end military conscription except in emergencies. The Move Forward Party leading that alliance has yet to mention revisions to a law that punishes perceived insults of the monarchy. The party pledged to amend that measure during its election campaign. The United States and Papua New Guinea have agreed to sign a security compact which gives the U.S. vital access to Papua New Guinea's territorial waters. VOA's Ahadi Utama reports from Port Moresby. U.S. President Joe Biden has shifted attention to the Pacific over concerns about China's increasing influence in the region, as Beijing has been giving diplomatic and financial assistance to some Pacific nations. Papua New Guinea Prime Minister James Marape says agreements with Washington that focus on defense cooperation and maritime matters will be formally signed after parliamentary approval. Now we are elevating to a specific defense cooperation agreement, uh, something that is falling short of a treaty. Uh, and so this has been an ongoing work for some time. The defense and maritime agreements will allow the U.S. access the waters near the sea routes to Australia and Japan. In return, Papua New Guinea will gain access to U.S. satellite surveillance. With the U.S. Coast Guard, it now gives us an opportune time to have access not just on maritime access, but satellite access to illegal fishing, uh, drug, drug traffickers, uh, illegal loggers. Elias Wuhengu, Papua New Guinea Foreign Affairs Secretary, led the negotiation and says the pact will not prevent Papua New Guinea from engaging with other nations. We are within the ambit of the foreign policy perspective of Papua New Guinea, friends to all, enemies to none. This agreement does not in any way preclude PNG from engaging with another nation in a future defense cooperation agreement. Analyst says, this pact will raise concerns over U.S.-China rivalry in the region and potentially put Pacific Island nations in the middle of U.S.-China tension. In 2022, the Solomon Island agreed to sign a security pact with China. Obviously, there comes a point where <laughs> one has to be careful if, uh, if um, those different external players reach heightened levels of, of tension and, and PNG and its neighbors can be... Uh, caught in the midst of it. Adian Utama, VOA News, Papua New Guinea. And finally, nothing is impossible. That's the mantra for the first double amputee to summit Mount Everest. Nepalese war veteran Hari Buddha Magar has made history by becoming the first ever double above the knee amputee to reach the top of the world's tallest mountain. He lost both of his legs while serving in Afghanistan. Buddha Magar reached the top of Mount Everest on a pair of prosthetic legs. Visit voanews.com for the most up-to-date stories. Thanks for watching VOA Asia Weekly. I'm Jessica Stone. We'll see you next week.